What's it like for your character, Jonah, processing the generational trauma passed down from mm -hmm. your family from the Holocaust? What's it? Oh, that's a tough first question. <laughs> What's it like processing it? Yeah. Um, you know, I can say um, it's not too dissimilar to my upbringing anyways. I'm Jewish and my family were uh, survivors of the Holocaust. So it's something that was present in my mind so I can kind of relate to it when going into this experience and trying to understand Jonah and this world. And what would you say, Jonah, what's Jonah's in, internal struggle like, you know, throughout the series when he sees, like, these Nazi trials and stuff? What, mm. What's his inner monologue like? Well, well, the center of this series, I mean, it revolves around, you know, I guess my character's journey into this uh, group of hunters that are going around to track down Nazis and bring them to justice. But at the center of it is a moral question about, you know, does it take evil to fight evil? Do you have to become a bad guy to fight effectively fight the bad guys. And um, we explore that with, with Jonah and, and through these, um, you know, scenes of in, interrogation and torture. Uh, it, it definitely makes us, as audience members, it makes us question uh, whether this is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting, interesting way of exploring that, you know, that, uh, you know, um, question of morality, really, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. You have a great cast along, working alongside you. How is it like working with them and with Al Pacino? No, it was insane. It was really cool. It was a great group of, of actors, you know, um, all around. And, and we were all dedicated to the show and in love with the writing and wanting to fully realize uh, the best version of what this could be together. So it was a really great group and um, uh, Yeah, just a good collaboration I'm Really lucky with this group of people Yeah. What would you say is you know, it's a new project that you've worked on Is there anything new that you had to tap into within yourself for this project from maybe previous? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to give anything away but there's definitely uh, moments, especially later on in the season, um, that are different for me for, in terms of characters that I've been uh, lucky enough to portray, projects I've been fortunate to be a part of. I haven't had a chance to do something like this, and I, I'm gonna leave it vague just so I don't ruin anything for anybody that watches this, but there's a, a big uh, arc for my character, and later on in the series, we get to explore some really uh, interesting scenes. Sister Harriet is very sure of herself. <laughs> um, is there something in her past that has forced her to kind of be this way? Yeah, absolutely. Her past is a lot more complicated than, mm. uh, than anyone realizes. And so she's built a very, very strong uh, fort around her. And uh, yeah, that, that's, that's her only kind of way of keeping herself safe and sane, I think. Does Murray consider Jonah a son? He yeah, it, it really quickly, I think, is we're, we, you know, we have lost family in the past, lost a son, and he reminds us of a son we've lost. And so we have a, a, a real feeling of wanting to protect him instantly uh, that we have to be careful about, uh, because he's not our son, and he has his own journey. But I think it's part of the journey of our characters is, our relationship with Jonah as a surrogate son, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lonnie's a bit reckless. Would sure. you say that that's like his biggest strength or his biggest weakness? Well, I think it's probably both. I mean, he, uh, part of his shtick is he will say anything and kind of do anything, but I think it's masking a certain amount of insecurity and, and he's not entirely sure of who he is because he's worn all these masks for so long. And I think part of the journey for him and throughout the series is he, he kind of figures out who he is and what, what is meaningful to him and what gives him some meaning outside of the adoration of hordes of anonymous people that he's never really going to meet and connect with. And, and I think he, he finds this family, you know, this family that gathers together on this mission. And it's a kind of warped mission, but it's a, it's a family nonetheless. Mm -hmm. This question I just want to throw out for all of you. 
Um, are there any emotions that come up on set, you know, especially during like the shooting sequences of like putting Nazis on trial and such? Yeah, of course, there are. There are, because we all come not just as characters, but as actors with completely different, vastly different backgrounds and um, experience and um, memories. And that always, that part of our job is to make that real. And, and so, of course, you do walk away sometimes really exhausted after a day of, <laughs> you know, yeah. of torture, but yeah. also a reminder of, of the, the real true life story behind Hunters, which is the persecution of the, of the Jewish population. So it's, uh, that's something that, that we take very seriously on set and, and with each other. For me, I, I found in the reading of it and even in the watching of episodes, it wasn't exactly the stuff we were doing, which has a more pop kind of almost fun, but also supremely dark. But the, the, the flashback scenes, the Holocaust, sometimes you'd be reading them or watching them and it just takes your breath away, just how horrifying. And then it, it almost helps you understand the stakes of mm -hmm. without this, this other stuff doesn't happen. And it contextualizes it in a way that was really shocking That's and right. scary. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also on set, when you'd see someone dressed as, oh yeah, you know that would that would always bring it really bring it home. Or rows of uh, shirts with yellow stars on them, yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Exactly. But also, it's going out to two hundred countries, and one of the most horrifying things is about how history is not being taught properly in schools everywhere, and much of history is being rewritten and revised. Mm. And so, it's it's a good thing that uh, they flash back to these horrors. It relates to modern horrors. That's right. So you play a Nazi. <laughs> What's your process look like for getting into character? Sure. Um, well, obviously, bes beside all the research that you do looking at psychopaths throughout history and looking at the Nazi regime and how this influenced society, apart from all that, going on to set, um, to what really gets me into the mind space of Travis is listening to music. And um, music is a very powerful way of evoking a certain emotion very quickly. Um, so I normally listen to something heavy metally or prog rocky, something that has some like real <laughs> like weight to it that makes me feel amped up and confident. So that's like how I normally get into the mind space as I go on to set. Hmm. How does how much does Millie's personal life and her sexual orientation affect her work? Oh, well, I mean, critically, you know, she's she's closeted. And so uh, she's closeted working for the Federal Bureau of Investigation right after the uh, era of J. Edgar Hoover, uh, who was notorious for prosecuting anybody that he thought was, you know, um, anti-American, and, and you can take that to mean what you will, which frequently meant gay. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you've got somebody who has to compartmentalize their life so heavily, um, naturally that's going to affect their work but I think also on a deeper more emotional level you know she she she's hung she she doesn't see reflections of herself in the world right so she's constantly seeking that out and I think that hunger just kind of within her soul uh, also feeds the hunger for which she pursues things through her cases um, personally yeah are there any emotions that come up on set you know, naturally the subject matter is pretty heavy at times. Is there anything that kind of comes up that... Yeah, it's, um, for me, it's... I'm in a constant battle with my own mind on set. Um, because Travis is this, like, agent of chaos and purely narcissistic and self-assured, um, it's a struggle for me to get there sometimes. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a battle of feeling good enough I suppose mm. for me it's mm. like yeah it's I'm trying to it's it's a, it's a balancing act any role is that anyway mm -hmm. um but yeah it's that's that's my yeah. reaction I mean there were definitely dark there's dark there's quite a bit of darkness in the show um so absolutely you know f echoes of that kind of stick with you um, and how did you, I mean, for me, it's just, you know, when the, when the day is done, go grab a glass of scotch and... Yeah. switch off. <laughs> yeah, hang out with some friends. Yeah, well, yeah. essentially the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go home and just pass out. Yeah. Similarly to that, do you guys have any, is there a favorite scene in particular that you've enjoyed filming? Hmm. 
Ah, oh, it's going to be spoilery though. Yeah, so I've I've got an answer, but it's spoilery. Um, mm. I'll gi I'll give an overview without spoiling it. Um, something that comes up later on in the season, the very last episode, you get to see a little bit more to Travis's history and his background, and um, the way he utilizes that is very interesting, and it mm. says a lot about him, and that's what I'm most excited for people to see. I mean, I think uh, you know, I think about. A couple of scenes that I've shared with Al Pacino. I think about um, a couple of scenes with Millie and her family. Um, those those are the kinds of things that I'm just yeah. I'm very excited for audiences to see them, but I feel like I can't say anything about mm, them. No, no, <laughs> so hard. Do you have any funny on set stories that maybe you could share? Yeah, Oh God, where do you start? Like, what which one do right? you pick? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a constant roller coaster with these guys, and like. Just, we live in our own separate worlds yeah, on set. Yeah, yeah. So the hunters do their thing. You've got your world. The Nazis do their thing. I've got my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't suppose we really have much, we didn't have that much time on set together, did we? We did in the, like, is it the second episode? Uh, three, I think. It's three? Okay. Yeah, two and or then, three. And then maybe later, I don't know, no spoilers. How ah, do we talk about this? Yeah, sure, I know, right? <laughs> um, I was, a memorable moment for me was sitting in Long Island uh, with Al Pacino and Josh Radner and Tiffany Boone, all on the couch in between takes watching the Democratic National Debate, the second one, I think, and me just going, where the hell am I? And what? Mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. nodding along and going, yes, yes, I know exactly what I'm talking about in American <laughs> politics. I know exactly. My opinion matters. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was my experience then. <laughs> uh, what kind of internal struggle is your character facing throughout the first half of the series, being a black woman, fighting for a cause outside of the Black Panther movement? Yeah, I think for Roxy, um, really her true fight, even though she is fighting for justice, is really for her daughter. Um, she's trying to take care of her daughter. That's kind of why she becomes a part of the Hunters. Um, but she does believe in justice for all. You know, the Black Panthers were power to all the people, right? And so even though it's not her cause, she has to believe, if she believes that black people should be taken care of and protected and should have equal rights, she believes that all people should. So, um, but she does, as the season goes on, she starts to struggle with, like, is this really my fight? Should I be a part of this? Should I just watch over my daughter and myself and that be it? And you'll see what kind of decision she comes to. Uh, why is Joe so mysterious? And are <laughs> we going to see more of his backstory throughout the series as it progresses? Yes. <laughs> yes and yes. Oh, why, why, why is he mysterious? Well, there, he's got some demons to exercise and he's afraid. Uh, I, I, I always saw Joe as kind of like the Incredible Hulk. He's doing, he's Bruce Banner trying his best not to hurt the people around him because he has so many demons inside. That's awesome. about all I can say. That's <laughs> wonderful. Does Mindy consider Jonah a son, and do you think she is a bit more protective over him than the rest of the group? Uh, yes, I, I don't think... I don't think I consider him my son, but yes, he is a son to me, and I definitely am very protective of him, and I... I wish uh, that he had not become a part of, of us mm. because I'm, I'm frightened for him. And any of you guys can answer this. Do you guys have any like funny on-set stories from when you guys were filming that you can think of? Oh, too many to count. <laughs> like, what's safe to share? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a good one. I have a good one. Uh, this has to do with Al. Uh, w one day on set, you know, we would, this show takes place in 1977 and he was so iconic then already, but uh, I, uh, he was talking about, oh yeah, my first film, uh, I was only okay, but around my second film, I, I kind of figured it out and we were all like, what film was that? And he goes, The Godfather. <laughs> right. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I was right. like, wow. I said, wow, you figured it out yeah, really quickly. Really quickly. quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the highly stylized structure of the series makes the storyline a bit more believable? I don't, I don't know if it makes it more believable. 
But I do think, you know, I think the flashbacks are super realistic, mm -hmm. right? And so, and the the respect we're trying to give to the atrocities of the Holocaust, right? All of that, like, heaviness match with the, like, heightened brightness in your face comic book style of the 70s, I think creates a good balance, right? And it just gives you um, a moment to escape it for a second and not have the violence in the 70s feel as um, dark, if that makes sense, so.